Four yeah, games. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Morning, everybody. Those people who don't know me, my name is Chris Maynard. I'm a professional technician and a technologist. And I'm also an ex assessor, moderator, and interviewer. Today, what we're going to do is to discuss the very types of correspondence you can receive from the Engineering Council of South Africa, which is known as EXA, after your interviews. Now, there's uh, different types of uh, that you get. You get your supply of information that's lacking before process can proceed. That's the one first letter that you can get correspondence, the invitation to experience interviews, the next uh, one, and also the deferred after experience interview, or you can get a buy-in's correspondence after experience appraisal or interview. Now you can also then, there's only one letter, actually two letters you can get for professional review, which is the interview is the deferred after professional review, or acceptance correspondence after professional review. Okay, the next one, John. Okay, the correspondence to supply before the process can proceed. Now, what happens is it's usually, usually that this correspondence is requesting further information due to not being supplied by the applicant. Usually when you do your application, you get a checklist. You must go through that checklist, ensure that you've got everything. Information required is when the applicant is not using the correct forms are used. Incomplete application, application not signed by the commissioner of oath where required. Referees outstanding. Incorrect format used. Applicant changes the format. Now, your correspondence will or foreign qualification not assessed by EXA Council is also, or incorrect or non-payment of the application fee. Now, your contents of your uh, correspondence will, it will state the required information to be is supplied, the time frame for the information to be supplies, supplied, and to whom this information is be, to be sent to. And what is the consequences if you ignore this request? Your application can be cancelled and you can forfeit your application fee. Now, the next correspondence that we get is the invitation to experience interview. This e correspondence will only be sent to you if the information that is incomplete or lacking for the outcome after the applicants has been assessed by four qualified assessors and also by two moderators. Now, the contents of the correspondence will be the outcomes to be interviewed upon, date and time of interview. Now, that is important. And also, which is very, very important, preparation for that interview. You only prepare for the identified outcomes only, not for the rest. If they say you've got four outcomes or seven outcomes that you have to supply information, you go through your application, and you read through it and you prepare for that interview. Now, what can happen after your interview or experience interview, it can be deferred after that. The applicant can be deferred to proceed to professional review. That means that in your application stops there, it does not go any further. A correspondence uh, sent to you states the following, reason for deferment and the outcomes not achieved. The meaning of a deferment means you have to reapply for registration, the whole process from the beginning. Then your next correspondence that you can get is in a buyance. Now, a buyance correspondence can only be given in two instances. After the assessors have assessed the document evidence, which they say you have not got enough experience and they give you 12 months to get that experience or after the experience interview, the same situation. The contents of the correspondence for both situations, the period of abeyance is 12 months. The outcomes that require the necessary experience, the way you have to pick up where you've lost it is, does happen quite a lot, 
and we do allow that. Now, a buy-ins can be extended if a valid reasons are submitted only for one time, not again and again. Okay. We can go to the next slide. All right, correspondence. There's two types of correspondence that you can receive by peer review, but we'll first do the deferred after peer review the interview. Deferred after peer review means you have not indicated your competency in certain of the 11 outcomes that is stated there. Now the correspondence states the following. A reason for your deferment, outcomes you have not indicated competency, choice of having an advisory interview or appealing against the decision of the deferment. So you, if you do not agree, you can ask for advisory interview or you can appeal against the decision of the deferment. Now, what does it mean if you do get a deferment? You have to reapply for registration. So you have to go through the whole process again. Okay, correspondence for acceptance. Now, the last type of correspondence is where you receive correspondence stating you have been accepted and are registered as a professional. Now, a lot of people are striving for this, and then the correspondence contains informing you you have been accepted as a professional at EXA in your uh, grade, your registration number, attached a copy of the Engineering Professional Act, and attached a copy of the EXA Code of Conduct. So basically today it's a very short discussion, but uh, so we discussed this because I think this is very important because a lot of people don't understand, applicants understand what it means, the correspondence. Today we have briefly discussed the various types of correspondence you can receive during the process of registration as a professional at EXA. And acknowledgement is or it's based on RO3 PRO processes of application for registration of candidates and professionals. This is an EXA document which is on their website. And thank you for everybody and any questions. Okay, the. I think you should kick off with that question that was asked just now. Your, uh, yes. Your... Okay, I'll, I'll answer that. It, one thing, if you've got your BTEC and you're working as an artisan, uh, you must just check under the definition for a broadly defined engineering activity. What that means, and if you're working as an artisan, I don't think you're actually working at that level of a broadly defined engineering activity. This can be uh, uh, obtained by either changing your job or you're asking your employer to put you in a higher grade. But please look at your uh, document, EXA document, R02, STA, PE, PT, PCE, PN. There, you under the definition you get for a well-defined engineering activity, you get for a broadly defined engineering activity and also for a complex uh, engineering activity. The well-defined is on the level of a technician, broadly defined is on the level of a technologist and a complex uh, is under the for professional engineer. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes, 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 it does. It does. Um, I've got, I've got uh, two questions now. Ne? Um, yes. If in a case whereby uh, you assign up uh, a form, ne? but then it becomes incomplete and you made the payments, uh, what do what needs to be done? Do they send back the, the application form or you still need to uh, reapply? No, 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 no. If you have, uh, you've made your payment and you've uh, information is lacking on yes. the process where the registrar says you have to still uh, send in your experience report or your TER, your training experience report or your referee, they give you a time frame of 30 days usually to say, please submit that documentation for us. Oh, okay. Uh, they don't send you the whole one. 
back. You send just that documentation as it was said there, and they will give you an email address or contact person to contact to ensure that you get the correct documentation to them. So if your documentation is lacking on your application, they will send you a letter to say, please give us this. And it's via email usually nowadays. So it's not any more posts. So it will be directly to your email address. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay. What is um, the next the last question? question that I have? Yes. Uh, the last question that I have, if maybe like, um, since like I'm working as an artisan, eh, but then I can be uh, employed as, as a technician, same um, company, um, but I do get registered for EXA. So what benefits uh, does EXA have or what benefit uh, would I receive after getting registered as a technician or as a professional technician or and so forth? Okay. It doesn't matter on what level you are, technician, technologist, engineer, yes. you know, professional. Basically what it means is you're allowed to take ownership of your designs. You can say, I did this design. And that's okay. your responsibility you've taken. If you are not registered, and also it will help you in your career path. If you're going to work in government or, uh, or any of the parastatal places, and even with uh, consultancies or contractors, it is nowadays required for professional uh, personnel to be on site or in the office or even in the municipalities, they're requiring that now. There is a period of, I think it's now 300 and something or 400 and something days or what, which is on SISI's website, where it explains that so many days are left for government employees that are employed as technicians, technologists, and aren't registered to be registered. And it's a status also for you. Oh, okay. Because you will, uh, for instance, you might not get... Uh, um, by EXA, you will not get any, uh, what you call it? Uh, all right, uh, for deal from actually Afrikaans. Any advantages, but the advantage is your career will go up, your salary will go up, and will be monetary better for you, money wise, too. All right, because if you can look at it, people that are not registered, they do not. They, they don't get easily employed. Where people that are registered, they are employable. Am I right? If you pick that up with your friends. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yes, okay. So that is one of the advantages. And it is, uh, we say it's a status, but it's not actually a status. You take responsibility of your work that you do. Because if you're re not registered, there's no recourse against you at all for your designs. And because of the uh, identification of engineering work uh, rules that's been published, everybody working in engineering must be registered within the next three years. So uh, it will be uh, compulsory to, to register very soon. Okay. Zamvo, is that answered for you? It does, it does, it does answer, sir. Okay, so you know what your career path you have to go forward to and your planning and your pro. But remember, and I'm telling this to everybody, if you get deferred, do not think that's the end of the world. Success comes from failure because there's many people that have failed and they've stood up and they become successful. I had also many failures in my life too. I could have sat down in the heap and cried about it. Even Johan has got a lot. Even Dr. Sina, we are the senior guys here. We've had failures, but we stood up and we went ahead and we got our success. That might just take a bit longer. So don't think anything is a failure. Okay. Chris? A uh, question about deferment. If you deferred for a year and you have to, to put in uh, documentation again after, after that period of deferment, you don't have to pay again, do you? No, you don't. Uh, now, it's not deferred for a year. That's the wrong term. That is abeyance. 
put in a buy-ins. Okay. If you defer it, you defer it. If you've been put in a buy-ins, and that can only happen on uh, the on the experience, on your evidence of documentation that you can get deferred when the assessors work through it, to say you have got you're already almost on the level, but you're not fully on the level. Your report has to be rewritten, and after the experience interview, you can be said you. You got most of the outcomes, but there's a few outcomes that you have not got the experience. We give you 12 months to get that experience. I see Dr. Sinas has his hands up and has a question from <coughs> Kembi. Yes. Yeah, please just, you know, Johan asked a good question, but during a band's period, sometime exam may ask additional referee report during a band's period. Correct. And also yes, they may correct. ask to resubmit engineering report and training and experience report during that period, one year period. Yes. But, uh, okay. In that 12 months period, you have to resubmit your engineering per report. That is correct. And you also have to update your training report and your training summary. And referee also additional referee. Uh, if your referees are right, it's not a problem. You know, you can, they can also ask that, but sometimes they don't ask that. They just ask for your training. Okay. But, Chris, but the referee, we don't usually ask for that. It's the only time when you ask for a referee is especially on a technologist. If you're one of your referees is not registered as a, a technologist, but is it a uh, and he's not registered at EXA, but he's been used as a referee. You have to put in a third ref. I mean, another referee, which is the fourth referee. And if you're a technician and you're a super direct supervisor of the technologist, that is, uh, you have to also submit. Uh, if I remember correctly, you have to also submit the further referee. Okay. So you have to submit four. Chris, yes. There's, there's a couple of questions. The one question is, I have uh, I have experience before registering. Will it be counted for when I register? That's the one. And then Kembin Kozi has a question after you've answered that one. And then Tuli. Okay. Yeah. If you, okay, you get your BTEC, for instance, in, uh, for instance, in, say we get it now in 2021. And you want to register but you got your national diploma eight years ago and you got six years of high, uh, level E experience and you've been working at a broadly defined engineering activity, you can apply via the alternative route there. As if, but although you do add it, but that you can be done. So you go according to the alternative route there. But you need three years after your VTEC uh, that's you correct. Yeah. Your qualification to register usually, un unless you go through the yes. alternative. Yes. There's one thing what, uh, what I've picked up lately is what the uh, the applicants do is they might have done uh, a lot of BTEC subjects, and because it's being phased out, they didn't do one subject, and they just need the eighth subject. Then they do quickly the eighth subject, but then they want to register on the. Uh, on the route where you already got, but you can't, you have to go and register at the alternative route. Unluckily, that's a system. You have to have three years experience of post experience of your BTEC in one year, inclusive at level E of responsibility where limited supervision is. Okay, Tim, okay. can you unmute yourself and ask your question? We've been waiting for a long time. Go ahead. I see you're unmuted. Although we can't hear you. Can we cause it? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. More afternoon. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, I'm one of those people, you know, who are on the verge of, you know, uh, giving up. Um, I, 
I submitted my first uh, submission, I think it was 20, 2016, because I got, I got my BTEC in 2012, right? And uh, I think it was about three, three and a half years after I got my BTEC, I, I submitted my first submission. And um, <clears throat> I went through the whole process um, and um, I was, I was, um, what do you call it when when they want more uh, want you to have more experience so i had a bias um, yes yes so they wanted me to submit after a year and um i did that <clears throat> and i went for <clears throat> I, I went for an interview um and then i got deferred um yeah, that was back in 2018 now and after that, um, you know, um, I got, you know, uh, I was really dis, um, disappointed and, and demotivated. Uh, only recently <clears throat> uh, that I started to re, re look at my at my application again and trying, I'm trying now to uh, take my experience to the new forms because the forms have changed, I think in 2018 um yeah so my question was um because i've changed the employer and most of the people who are you know signatories in in my application i have no contact uh, with them now and um, how can i go about uh, should i should i get the the affidavits or what should i do Okay, it's quite easy. All right, if you cannot find the person, you know, what you worked with in the past, and you've uh, tried all methods that you can try and see if they're on LinkedIn, if they're not, or whatever, and it's no problem. You can put in the affidavit because what happens is EXA code of conduct is there that says we believe in your honesty. Then on your application, your new application, I can give you advice quickly. Please write down R O two S T A P T P E P T. Now that R O two is a very critical document. You have to go and read through that just on the section for um, technologist because you know you want to register as technologist. Then you read at table seven. It gives you a good outline of what you have to fill in on all the outcomes. Then can, you have to you, go, huh? Can you read table, the, seven. Table, table seven? seven. Table seven. Table seven of yes. uh, which, which document? RO2, RO2, okay. STA, and then you get, it's PT, I mean, PET, PCE, PN. That is a critical document. Then you must go to R08 PT. Okay. That will tell you what the assessors expect from each outcome. It's a good guideline. Then you can also go right at the bottom is the guideline to write, uh, prepare your uh, application. That's the last one there. There's a lot of information in it. Please do not just scan over. They explains to you a lot of issues that the people have, especially when they start, start talking about legal uh, and statutory, where they start talking about uh, voluntary associations. But that voluntary associations that is right up top there that you can belong to, but it's not critical. But the legal, and it explains to you what your referees have to do. It's a very, very put, a well put out document too. So please do not think of us as a five minute job. You do one outcome, you walk away and you go back and read it and see, yes, did I do it right or did I do it wrong? Did I get the outcomes? Did I do it? That? And remember the minimum time to fill in this document is going to take you 50 hours to do it correctly. What I mean by correctly, please use your common sense on this. Use your experience on this. 
do not think it is, you can give it to your colleague, your friend, he will say it's fine. Better give it to your enemy. He will criticize it and you know you'll get an honest answer. Okay. Okay, Chris. And look at your other one that you read before and see where you made your mistakes and then you can uh, correct it. In what field are you in? I mean, <clears throat> I'm working I'm working for the Etiquini Council. Yeah, but Etiquini. what, uh, civil or electrical? Um, I'm in civil. I'm doing roads. Okay. So please make sure you know all the technical terms and that, that you put in there and all the tests that are required. Okay. That's just a hint for you. All right. Now, is, is that, are you happy now? Is that... Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. Yes. Okay. I see Zon, uh, who's the next one? So, uh, yes. Zolani. Uh, yeah, we have Zolani's hand up, but uh, there's a question that was put there before that to Lee. Uh, mm. To Lila asked, I have an issue with my qualification. It has been held due to my financial aid not paying. But can I register without my qualification with EXA? Only use my completion method until the issue is resolved. So if you could quickly answer that and then Solani uh, to ask a question. Um, that is a uh... That is a problem because we need that document to show that your qualification is there. Because if you write there and say you got the subjects and you got this and you, this is your outcomes, we haven't got any uh, way. But if you got enough uh, years of experience, you can go through the national diploma route as the alternative route also. Because it's a, we need that uh, document to prove that you have that qualification. Now, unfortunately, EXA requires the the um, certificate, the degree certificate. That's it. Uh, That's it. I know they also won't uh, register you as a candidate unless you have that. In other words, if you haven't uh, paid your fees to the university, they will not even register you as a candidate. I don't think it's fair, but... Uh, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, that is the way they do things. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, Zolani, please yeah. unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, okay, Joanne. Thank, thank you, Joanne. I hope you hear me clearly, guys. Ne? Clearly. Okay, yeah, no, my okay, no, my question is just a quick one. I would like to know. Ne? How, what is the period like when you have a diploma and you want to apply for technologies using the alternative road? Like what is the required period that you can submit your application after or, or, or performing the broadly defined engineering problem while you have a diploma? Okay. Uh, you can check up uh, on the RO2 SDA uh, there at the uh, Appendix A, and if I remember right, that is eight years with six years of level of, uh, of uh, E. In what field are you working in, Zolani? No, I mean, civil. No, it's just a, a, a question of curiosity because I have my BTEC. So I will, I will, I'm not submitting in the alternative road. It's just a question of curiosity. Yeah, no, it's there. You can look at. You know, if you look at your uh, EXA documents, especially RO2, I think a lot of people have heard me talking about this document a lot. There's a lot of information that is put in there. You wouldn't okay. believe it there. If you just read through the documents and it will explain a lot of things there too. Oh, okay. Have you applied? Oh, okay. Have you applied? Uh, how long are you still no, have to go through it. before? Uh, I'm submitting next month. I'm submitting next month because it, my three years... Is ending next month because I started qualified in first of August, twenty eighteen. Yeah. Okay. So I'm but, submitting. Uh, just be careful. One thing, Solani. What I'm just uh, warning you, you know, make sure that you have that experience and make go through that document or RO two SDA, and be yes. critical with yourself, because you know what, you're paying uh, nearly eight and a half thousand rand. 
And it's a pity if you have to lose that. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. It's better understand. maybe to wait a little bit longer and get more experience of, you know, maybe another six months or whatever. Just make sure you can tick all the boxes on your outcomes. If you're not sure, find out about that. Okay, but okay. I'm confident, Chris. Okay, but I'm confident, Chris, because of I have about 10 years of experience in the industry. And then I, 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 I have registered as a professional technician in 2017. And then I've undertook two broadly defined engineering problem solving. And then I was using R, the, 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 the document that you are referring us to, the, 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 the RO2, yeah. the, the, the current one, which was, uh, which was established August last 2021. year. 2021. Yeah, yes, it. the current yeah. one, as well as the RO8. And what I've picked up is that on the RO8, for each and every outcome, there is a, a, a bullet there that are stating clearly what the applicant should cover to be competent. Okay, that's outcomes. fine. So just that's make sure, and when, you, and when you're doing the application, make sure your sure uh, uh, spelling and grammar is correct grammar also. Is correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And do not do name dropping. What I call name dropping is you use terms there. We as assessors or interviewers, we understand the industry. And if you use a term, we're going to ask you about that technical term. So you write in technical terms, but make sure you understand what the technical term is. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Okay. 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 Oh, thanks, thanks, Chris. Sure. thanks a lot. Cheers. Eh? Okay. Jan, anybody else? I don't see a hand at the moment, but anybody who has a question, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Let's see if there's a new message. Uh, a question from Vonetia. Are you registered based on the subdiscipline you are working in or as a professional engineer, no matter the subdiscipline? Especially for professional engineers here, uh, uh, Chris, because. Um, <clears throat> Cornet uh, is not uh, a technologist, he's an engineer. Yeah. Uh, you're a subdiscipline, but it means that you are qualified in that area and you get tested on that. You get interviewed on your uh, competency on what you know in your field. It does not mean that if you, uh, you're a professional engineer in uh, electrical, you can be light or heavy duty, but it's in the field. And the, the code of conduct says you must be competent in the field that you are uh, uh, working in, in your area of expertise. I'm so your like registration to... gets uh, gets the on your subdiscipline. If you, for instance, you go for civil engineering, you can say you are water. And you will get uh, questioned on the water. You will not get questioned on uh, structures or uh, roads. You will get questioned on your field of expertise. Okay, Johan, you can come in. Dr. Sino, would you like to add to that maybe? I am all right. I am comfortable. You agree what I said there, Dr. Sino? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Very right. Yeah. Okay. The next question When can graduates apply for candidate engineer registration? Then, how does one register as a candidate engineer? And what are the obligations that the candidate must fulfill every year, like CPD points and all that? And what are the fees involved per year to be registered as a candidate? How many years of candidate experience is required? To register uh, as a PR engine. Okay, I'll just talk out under the experience of technologists. After you got your BTEC, you can register within a year to become a candidate technologist, and you apparently you don't pay fees. Over a year, you pay uh, administration fees. So the first year, you basically get for nothing, and there are people that are staying for candidates for the rest of their lives. And it depends. 
uh, depends on your period of three years after post uh, qualifications and you can apply to become a professional i think for engineers it's the same am i right dr Sina? yes you are right you are right okay and uh, the application fee don't tell me how much that exa decides for the eu not us how you they yearly they change a few you just fill in you just fill in it's a one pager that you fill in and you add a copy of your degree certificate, and uh, that's all that's required. You don't have to, to uh, supply any uh, experience reports to register as a candidate. So, uh, <clears throat> so it's very easy to register. Uh, you must look on the exam wanna... what they require you to do. And you don't. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to, to be able to say that you've done certain courses because it'll help you in your registration. Uh, but there's no re requirement that you must do this or that CPD. Uh, okay, I see he's got a question here. You know, good I have a civil engineer, a civil engineering candidate since 1213 working in the field of construction. I haven't done any design, just contract management on site. All right, let's go back. Uh, on construction, basically, when you even if you're doing cons contracts management, you're looking at drawings, you're looking at designs, you've changed the designs, or you say to the consultants the design is not correct, and you come up with your design. That is designing on site, also. That does fall under your uh, expertise. It doesn't mean that you have to, if you're doing construction, you have to go and work for consultants. Okay. And you need three years minimum uh, between your, your qualification and uh, applying for registration. Uh, okay, I think it's just good to... More than, than three years, but uh, yes. the minimum is three years. And I see Cabello has a okay. question there. Uh, I was, uh, again, first, and then we can go to the, the chat group again. Gabello, you can come in. Oh, hi, Chris. How are you? All right. I can't complain in yourself. No, I'm all good. Thanks. Uh, I just mm. want to ask you, like, uh, I've been, like, reading, like, uh, the application form, this template for uh, TER form B 2.1, where it says, like, uh, health and safety considerations, hazard and environmental considerations and other legislation, right? So say for mm -hmm. instance, like you've been like working in the office where you just like doing design, you get like maybe say like you're working on a project where you just only like maybe you're doing designing storm water or for instance, this take for uh, mm -hmm. a whole project, you're just doing your storm water. So there okay. isn't any- Okay, I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop you there now quickly, huh? Okay. Okay. You're doing design of uh, stormwater. You're crossing yes. the road. Am I correct? Definitely. Yes, but what do you do about the traffic diversion? That falls under health and safety. You design oh. that. Oh, okay. Your traffic okay. management, you do that. You understand what I'm saying? And even when you're designing yeah. roads and you have to cut off roads, you have to give a traffic management plan there. Yes. That falls under health and safety also. You're looking after the public. But if you're only working in the design office, ask your employer, can you go to site and look at your designs and attend meetings to get that experience? Oh, okay. No, I do have like that experience. Even like I just wanted like to get clarification. Even, even if like you're doing like uh, traffic accommodations, it does fall under hazard, right? Yes. That right. falls under health and safety because what are you doing with the traffic accommodation there? You have to get it approved by your local yeah. authority. Yeah. It can be the municipality or it can be Gautrans or it can be, uh, what do you call it, Sunroll or it can be Roll or any yeah. road agency in the right. area. You go and you get it to divert the traffic. You have to make accommodation for that. You have yeah. to accommodate that. So that is also health and safety. Okay. Then environment, hey. Okay. You take into consideration when you do the designing, you take into consideration your dust control, 
you take in if you're excavating deep excavations what do you do about it even any excavation how do you do you barricade it you've written the specifications am i correct i definitely you are correct so yes. that is health and safety so you understand where you're coming from now no i do i do okay i have another question okay. say uh, i've been mm. like uh, working as a technician while i'm studying to be a technologist right so yes when I'm doing like my final year as a technologist, like for that uh, last year, I was working at the level of a technologist doing, I'll say like, say I was doing like a completely fine. So no. after I've completed my BTEC, say I get a project to go and work on site where I'm doing like a project that has like everything, all the services, your sewer, storm water, all your hotels and everything and buildings. So say I work for two years, Will that experience be enough for me to say I can write my report about it and submit it? Uh, you can't submit before then, because either you go the alternative route or you go after three years post. No, I'm saying like say, after your BT. Yes, sir. Say after yes, I've completed uh, yeah. my BT, I go and work yes. full time on site. The project, the project duration is about like two years where I'm doing yes. all this it's like a new development where it is like everything. So I'm saying that three years that I've spent on that project, can I write report about it? Yes. Or I have can. to add like another project. No, you can, if it's two years or you work three years on the project after you got your uh, BTEC, you can write just on that, that's fine. But I'd, uh, it would be better to write from where you became a technician, what you started there at the beginning. And that because what I said is we work through, we look at your experience and your build up up to where you are now uh, applying. Because yeah. that gives us a good indication of your training and that. Because sometimes the technicians, they are actually working already on a broadly defined engineering activity, although they haven't got their BTEC. That gets yeah. taken also into consideration. Okay. Okay, now it's all all right. No, thank you very okay, much. Okay, Cabela. It's a pleasure. Uh, can we just quickly go before we go to Tim Uh this letter of uh Tsepu Kabu who said uh, how long you can re uh, they recommend it. You there's no recommendation of time period. You can do it straight away if you're confident with it. Because remember, when you did the application, it could have been that time long ago that had been six months ago, but you've improved with your projects and that. So you can reapply straight away. Or if you want to reapply later, you can do that. There's no time frame. Okay, can we go to Tim and Kozi? Um, thank you once again. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask a question. I know you referred me to those uh, documents, uh, which um, some of them I've read. Uh, I'll have to read them again. <clears throat> but in, in, in simple terms, you know, um, if you look at the engineering report B2.3ER, um, outcome number one, I think that's where for me, um, when I go for interviews with that way, I, you know, they, they don't get enough information that maybe they require. It says okay. de define, investigate and analyze broadly defined engineering. And then there's uh, one, two, three. Um, okay, All right. Can I just you, explain okay. to you uh, yeah. in simple terms? Now, yeah. if you look at it, it says define. Now, what yeah. does define mean? Define means is, if you look at 1.1, 1 .1, it yeah. basically says, how did you look at the problem? Okay. You know, and so that's what it means is define the problem. How did it go about? How did you say, write about it? For instance, if you're doing a road, a rehabilitation yeah. of road, yeah. you saw the road was full of potholes. Its rideability was not correct. So that you say there, the problem was 
the road had full of potholes. It wasn't the rideability was not good. It was unsafe for the general public to use. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's defining. Analyzing means 1.2 means how did you, what information did you get? You say you did a visual inspection according to a certain standard. But you also used your engineering judgment to say this is not right. Then you looked at your material of the existing road that is there. What tests did you do? You explain. You say you did, for instance, test pits. Why did you do a test pit? You got the geotechnical to do the test pit, to look at the layer works, and to see what is the material underneath. And then you, for instance, you did the DCP. Why did you do the DCP? You explain why. Mm. Then... 1.3 is your assumptions. You said your assumption was uh, there had to be a three-layer road of 100, 100, and 150 on your base, and then a 25 blacktop. But you find out through your, that was your assumption, but through your calculations and traffic counts, you found you had to put in extra layers. Mm. That is what it is. That is what outcome one is. Does it make sense to you now? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does, it does. And it's very simple terms. I know they're using a lot of technical words and then you get mixed up. But it's just basically, how did you go about doing the information? How did you, you identify the problem? How did you collect the information? And what did you assume to be? Then one point, I mean, outcome two is how did you solve it? And what alternatives did you look at? That is what it basically is then. But remember, a common mistake that people make is they use one outcome one on one type of project. Or they use three different projects. Don't do that. Because then you start generalizing. You take one project, you say outcome one, this is what it was. Then outcome two is this is how I solved it. Many times the people change that project around and use a different project. And we as assessors and reviewers and interviewers, we don't know we, you know, what was the statement on that project mm. because you haven't identified. So one, two, and three follow on each other. Keep it to one project, preferably. Irrespective of the cost, how much it costs, how much it's value. If it gives you, it might be a 10,000 rand project but it gives you those outcomes, it's fine. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I'll get you. Thanks so much for that information. It's um, a pleasure. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. You on? Is there any other questions? I'm looking for anybody who has a question. Just unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, there's uh, Naidu. He, he can come in. Hi, Jan. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. How is it? Um, Chris, it's Prelin here. You gave me some it advice is. quite recently. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Keeping um, well, eh? <laughs> ah, good, thanks. And yourself? No, I can't complain. But anyway, let's hear what to... Okay. So it's, it's not really a question for my end. I just wanted to give the rest of the group some feedback. Um, so there, there are probably quite a few people that are in my position or might end up in my position. But I recently had my professional review interview. So thankfully my submission went through. They were happy with the experience outlined in my report and they called me in for a professional review. I thought that the interview went decently, but unfortunately, I think one person agreed that I should be registered and two people didn't from the panel. Um, and I got my letter saying that I was unsuccessful. So obviously I was quite disappointed. And I felt that I worked quite hard to reach that point to actually get registered and that I had sufficient experience. I think to date I have about eight years experience. So I've also worked on massive projects, massive values. So I really wanted to try and see what went wrong and maybe appeal the process. So I reached out to Chris just to get some advice and his advice was actually quite good. So the appeal process is apparently quite difficult and it's, it's not very often that an ex apparently overturned the decision and it can end up being quite expensive. Whereas if you just go for the advisory interview, um, it's obviously free. And the, there's a panel of three people that give you advice on where you went wrong or where you might have gone wrong. So in my interview, the guys just said, look, 
in your report, it looked like it did demonstrate sufficient experience, but unfortunately, whatever you presented during your interview um, didn't come across at the correct level of responsibility. So you just need to tweak that a bit. So mine was outcomes one, two, nine, and 10. So the advice and the sort of feedback from that interview session was to just go back to my report, retweak um, outcomes one and two, especially with what Chris mentioned now. I mixed up my projects. So for outcome one, I think I wrote on two or three projects. Outcome two, I also wrote on two or three projects. So I think what, what the guys really want to see is one project taken through from defining the problem in that project, investigating, analyzing, and then determining the solution for that problem. So they want to see that continuity from problem to solution and how you got to that. So yeah, I think that's, that's really good advice for outcomes one and two, just stick to, to one project. And just thanks for all the advice, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to rework on that and submit soon. Okay, thanks for that, uh, 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 Prelim. Thanks a lot for that. Okay, uh, Zonlani, do you want any other thing to say further? No. Let's see what Zonlani has. Zulani. Zulani. Oh, okay, Chris. Thanks again. Eh? Oh, I just no. have one question no. that I picked up from your explanation eh, to the other guy. I would like to know, man, is it necessary for us like to mention the the technical recommendations or technical method that we used on the criterions, or you can mention them on your outcome three? Like for instance, on, on my 1.2, I stated that I carried out a visual inspection. But I don't mention I carried out a visual inspection as per TMH9. I only mentioned TMH9 on my outcome three, and then I stated that I used it to, for visual assessment and then analyzing. I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, uh, is it at 1.1 or 1.2? 1 1 1 1 no, I'm just making an example like when you're writing your criterion. Is it necessary for each and every? activity that you did according to a uh, technical methods for TMH or TRH as I'm working on yes. roads. So, yeah. yes, yes, my question you is that. Do, no, no, let me come back here. You have to do that. But you give a short explanation, a very short explanation of to say, what was the criteria you used? You use that. Don't just say you use the TMH document to do your um, assessment. You say I use that, and this is what the criteria. And I use, uh, for instance, you some of the uh, assessments that you're doing does not fit in according to that standard form. So basically, when we're looking for technologists, is you using the guidelines, but you're also going over the guidelines and using your engineering judgment, and you must be able to explain that. Oh, okay. Does it does it help you now? <laughs> Read your documents through the the RO two and the RO eight too. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Study okay, them; they will give you a lot of information. You won't believe it. And please, if you're tired, do for instance outcome one, or you draw a spider diagram. You say outcome one, I want to talk about this. Outcome two will be following on this, and outcome three, and you work according to that. Okay. Don't just take your document and think within two hours I'm going to be finished. Use one project and go through it for outcome one, two, and three. And then uh, you'll see everything will be easy to flow through what you have to do. Because us as uh, assessors we or interviewers, we have to try and go through all this. And the, what happens is if you're doing three, four projects, I even had person that going from one to 12 projects on the TER. And, and it's just so generalized, you can't determine if the person is working at the level of a broadly defined engineering activity at all. Okay. Because none of your projects, and you can tell that your, your years experience you've had, none of your projects are all the same. Yes, one size yes, yeah. does not fit all. And I can yes. tell you, on a small project, you say, ah, this won't be so much problems. That's the worst nightmare job, but the 
the big ones, they go very well. And I think okay. everybody has had that experience too. Okay. Okay. Tsepi, come in. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, uh, so, uh, as I mentioned that recently my application was, was unsuccessful. I'm now working for a, a, yeah, a consulting company. Sites come in really, and there's some outcomes that uh, one mostly gets when on site. So when I do my reapplication, maybe in six months or a year's time, can I still use the same project, or, I mean, the site that I went to the first time? In some you can, of we don't even look at your previous application. We, um, if you've been deferred, your new application is as if it doesn't, ex the previous one doesn't exist at all. But okay. please make sure that you go through the extra documents to make sure that you've got all the outcomes. Uh, so you are saying I can technically still use all the same projects I used previously, just to wear it properly and yes. Okay. Yes, but make sure that you get the outcomes that you require. And please, there's one thing, uh, just be careful. Don't use a project that is four or five years ago. Because then we as interviewers will also ask, but what did you do in between after that? Well, you understand? Yeah, the, yeah, the biggest challenge now as an engineer is the complexity part of the project. So recently I might be doing projects that are, well, I consider not as complex. And the one that I wrote previous, that I did previously was what I considered complex. Okay. Are you applying for professional engineer? Yes. Okay. You can do that, but also look at also your latest that you're doing now. Okay. All right. So you also see what you can use and not use there. I know for technologists and, uh, engineer, and engineers, it's a bit different, but you can uh, use both of them and use those documents that they give you on the website and use them as guidelines and see there and improve on what you've written before. And if you've got any shortcomings, don't be shy. Go and talk to people who know about that field and pick up there. And then you, when you go to site, you'll see what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. All right, it's a pleasure. Okay. Next one. Sorry, coming. Chris. I've um, yeah. just got one question now that um, the lady previously discussed. On page two of the application, where it, it asks you to fill in previous registration, current registration, and previous application. If we did have a previous application that wasn't successful, do we need to complete this block now? Yes, you completed. Yes, you completed, but we don't even look at that previous application. Okay application okay. because we don't even look at it what we do is we look at your new application as if you never appl applied before okay 100 percent. and in terms of number and date do we just put the date of the actual application yes you just say where when you had your last uh, the interview that's it okay. for that in application usually that's fine okay cool thanks chris okay thanks Any other further questions? Uh, you on? No, I don't see any hands. Is there any more questions? Please ask. <clears throat> but in any case, uh, from IPET, the Institute of Professional Engineering Technologists, we do this as a free service to the profession. And uh, you're welcome to, to go to our website, uh, www.ipet.org.za, not uh, co.za, org.za, and have a look there. And you're welcome to join us. Uh, we, we look after, we're firstly there to look after technologists, but we look after the whole profession in the process. So uh, we're there as a service to the profession. and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that is what we do. I see Dekaledi has a hand up there. Please ask your question, Dekaledi. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Han. Um, my question is with regards to uh, outcome uh, nine, how to um, exercise sound engineering judgment. Uh, I just want to know um, how would we prove that? Do we prove that only by um, indicating uh, our reasoning for choosing um, the preferred option in um, outcome three and two, or how else would we be able to prove that? Okay, if you look at the, if you look at your uh, document, on the far right hand side it says your period, so you can take any of those periods that you want there, to say this is what it was, and this is how I solved it, and this is why I took my engineering judgment there. That is basically just to see how you did your engineering judgment to say, I did this design but it wasn't according to standard, for instance, but I used my engineering judgment to change it and why I did it and how I did that. That's basically what it is there. Does that answer your question? Okay, so it's just looking at uh, what the standards say and then making a judgment that is suitable for your specific project. Yes, you can, for instance, you take your TUR, maybe in outcome one, two, and three, you were using a, one outcome maybe TUR on your 10, eh? but you see TUR uh, for uh, the period TUR 9 will answer that uh, outcome. You can use that or you can use what you did in 1, 2, and 3 and explain your uh, there, what you did there. Okay. And just be okay. careful of one uh, that is in outcome 10, authority of out of your field of expertise. Look at it as a, a government authority like Roll, uh, Sunroll, ESCOM, uh, uh, Railways, those people there. Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Any more questions? If there's no more questions, uh, <clears throat> we'll have another session in two weeks' time, uh, the same way as we do this, as we did this one today. We usually have uh, Adrian who first talks about some uh, uh, leadership uh, issue for a few minutes, and then we go into the uh, registration discussion. We'll think of uh, an interesting subject to talk about and uh, uh, <clears throat> let you know in this uh, usual way and we have uh, we've recorded this this uh, session i'll stop the recording now and